What was Umar bin Khattab? Muslim. What was Usman Razilatara Anna? The name given to us by Allah is Muslim. Muslim. Mm-hmm. Those who divided their deen, their religion into sects and factions, you have you got have nothing, got nothing, to, nothing do to do with them. He's not going to ask me whether you are a Sunni or a Shia. Can you imagine? We are not thinking with the mind of the heart. Inna Rabbi latiful lima yasha. Inna Rabbi latiful lima yasha. Allah accomplishes His will in the most subtle manner. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers, sisters, and viewers, welcome to episode 8 Deep Dive into the Quran. Today we're going to be having another exciting episode, but I hope the last seven episodes you had the pleasure of listening to it and taking some valuable points from what Dr. Katak have mentioned. So today's one is quite exciting and often um, I get asked. But before we go to the segments, I'd like to say Assalamu Alaikum, Dr. Katak. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi. Dear viewers, brothers, and sisters. Alhamdulillah. And just, first of all, Jazakallah khair for all your beautiful knowledge of wisdoms that you are parting for the generations, younger generations, older generations, and the generations to come. And Today I would like to ask you a question that I often get asked um, and even when I go to other mosques they also tend to mention but as a mosque manager, someone in charge of the masjid when we get people coming from different parts of the country they say, oh, assalamu alaikum, walaikum salam brothers, is this a Sunni mosque? and some say, is this a, do you follow the Berlabi, Debondi, Shia? I really Myself, I don't really understand all these, all these terminologies, but I simply say, yes, we are a Sunni mosque. So could you explain a little bit of a light for our viewers what all this is about? Because it is quite confusing, and people do get distracted by that. Jazakallah khair for bringing up a really, really uh, important issue, topic, uh, and you bear the brunt of it and he feel the heat of that how divisive and uh, uh, sad this uh, mm-hmm. situation and this problem is. I will ask you a question, brother go on. Moment. Yes, go on. If I can answer it. No, you should think about it and answer it. And I'm going to ask my viewers as well, this question. And in this question lies the answer to everything, every suffering we have gone through as a ummah mm-hmm. for the past 1200, 1300 years, for the past, after 50 years of the passing away of the Prophet, we have been suffering it mm-hmm. from it and we have suffered it. Uh, was Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, who is the seal of the prophets and prophethood, who is the Khatam al nabiyin wal mursaleen last prophet sent towards mankind, yes. was he a Sunni or a Shia, or a Barelvi or the Bandi? Brother Momin. I don't think he was any of those, to my knowledge. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters, ask yourself, your and mine and every one of us, we, every one of us is prepared to sacrifice our lives for the love and respect and honor of our beloved Prophet. Ask yourself, was he a Sunni? 
Was our prophet a Shia? Was our prophet a Barelvi? Was our prophet a Deobandi? Was our prophet a Salafi? Was our prophet a Sufi? Please, give me the answer. What was he? I don't think he was any of those. He was, to my knowledge, I mean, he was parting the message of Allah. No, what was Allah. he? I don't know. The real answer. What a sad situation. Yes. It, it, it really has hurt me. Mm-hmm. Viewers, this is very sad. Very, very sad. The Prophet would have felt mm. this listening to our talk. Intimidating. No, he's, no. he's very sad. Nothing. Alhamdulillah, he is at Maqam Mahmood. He is at the at the fazila he nothing can intimidate him uh, but but it will have it will it will really really sadden him and it has saddened me so now after prophet i ask you another question was abu bakr radhiyallahu an was he shia was he sunni was he barelvi was he deobandi or was he uh, mm, Sufi or Salafi? No, I, to my knowledge, um, I think he, he was only following the footsteps of Prophet No, but what was he? He was a Muslim. Exactly. Hmm. So what was the Prophet? Parting the knowledge of Islam, a Muslim. And Muslim? Yes. What was Umar? Bin Khitab. Muslim. Was it no? Was it Sunni or Shia? No, he wasn't any of those. What was Usman Razilatara an? A Muslim. And now we come to mm. what was Hazrat Ali ibn Talib Ali Radiallah an? Was he Shia? Was he Sunni? Was he no. Salafi, Deobandi, Sufi, what was, viewers, I'll ask you, yeah, was a what well. was Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, Ali ibn Talib, what was he? Was he a Sunni or a Shia? I ask you, was Ali a Sunni or a Shia? What was he? He was a Muslim. Was follower a, of? Follower of Prophet sallallahu Islam. Of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was also a Muslim. So, viewers, when you go to the Prophet on the day of Kiyama, and he asks you, "Who are you?" and you tell him that I'm Sunni, and he, if he tells you, "I don't know who is Sunni," if you tell him. I'm Shia, and he, does, he says, I don't know who is Shia. I've never heard of this. And if you tell him I'm Deobandi, and I'm Barelvi, and I'm Sufi, and I'm Salafi, and he tells you that I've never heard of this. this these names do not exist in Quran. These names do not exist in my Sunnah. These deep names do not exist in the literature of Hadith. None of my companion was Sunni. None of my companion was Shia. None of my companion was Berelwi. None of my companion was Deobandi. None of my companion was Salafi. None of my companion was Sufi. So which deen were you following? What are you going to tell him? What explanation are you going to go give him? Brother Moment, what explanation will you give him? I don't know, really. Is it, is it, but by that time, game is over. Yeah. When he asks you this question and you have no answer to it, game is over. Mm. Now, let's come to something more significant, which is really, really grave. Okay. Allah says in Quran, in Surah Al-Hajj, verse 78, Allah says, 
strive hard for Allah as he deserves. He has chosen you. That's Allah telling us. He has chosen you and placed no hardship in your religion. The faith of your father Ibrahim. Now, this is the most important thing. The most profound thing I'm going to recite from Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, verse 78. Allah says further on, Allah has named you Muslims, both in the past and in this Quran, so that the messenger can bear witness about you, and so that you can bear witness about other people. Brothers, the name given to us by Allah is Muslim, mm -hmm. Muslims. Now, I ask you, Brother Momin. Yes. Go ahead. If you go to Allah on the day of Qiyamah, which you will, of course. and I go to Allah on the mm. day of Qiyamah, which I shall, mm -hmm. and every one of you viewers, when you go to Allah on the day of Qiyamah, and he tells you, he asks you, mm -hmm. he asks you, who are you? And you tell him you are Sunni. Viewers, and I tell him I am Sunni. What do you expect? What is he going to say to you? Yes, I mean, I think he, he will definitely say, as you've quoted it in, from the verses from the Quran, but created as Muslims. So Allah will tell you that you did not like the name which I gave you? Mm -hmm. Muslim, Momin, Altaf, viewers, we do not like the name given to us by Allah mm. and choose the name which has been met, came to existence 200, 300 years after the passing away of Prophet, Sunni, Shia, Barelvi, thousands of years later. Sunni, Shia, two, three hundred years later. Salafi, Sufi, Devbandi, 1300. 1,000, 1,100 years later, we adopted these names. We don't visit each other's mosques. We don't allow other people to come to our mosques. We don't do marriages among each other. There are so many examples. When they say, I'm not giving to, going to give the hand of my daughter because I have the Bandi and they are Barelvis. Where is the evidence? So we are actually rejecting the name given to us by Allah in his name. In his name, we are adopting other names and rejecting the name he has given to us in Quran. If they were not in the Quran, if Prophet ﷺ obviously did not mention them or followed them, who was responsible for giving those names and creating those sects in the first place? That is... So I'm very confused right now, you see. Um, and let's, and let's, that, the fact that you pointed out, it makes me think. Because until now, I have not thought about that. I just thought my parents have said, my community have said, Mimin, we're Sunni. If anybody comes share around it, have nothing to do with it. Or Sufi or Salafi or Debundi, all that stuff. So who created all this then? That is a very big thing to answer and very thing let to be me, responsible let for. Me Quote another verse mm. first before we go into that. Okay. I'm not a historian. I'm not a scholar. I'm not. <clears throat> I'm a very simple, trying to be a sincere Muslim. Of course. Following Quran and my beloved Prophet Sunnah. 
I'll come to that with the questions. But before that, you are saying who created the the, the factions, the sect, yes. the sects. Yeah. Oman bhai, listen to this ayah from Surah Al-Anam. There is a great warning in it. The first ayah, we have rejected the name given to us by Allah. As Muslim. As Muslim. We are nothing but Muslims. And the second thing is, this is as significant. So we reject it. Look at what Allah is then telling the Prophet. Allah, go ahead. So whoever reject this name, what is Allah telling the Prophet then? Surah Al-Anam, verse 159. As for those who divided their religion and broken up into sects. O Prophet, you have nothing to do with them. Their case rests with Allah. In time, he will tell them about their deeds. This is Allah telling his Prophet that O oh, my beloved Prophet, those who divided their deen, their religion into sects and factions, you have got nothing to do with them. This is Allah telling Muhammad, the Rasulullah, whom we claim to be our Prophet, and we claim that we believe in Allah, Allah is categorically telling the Prophet that if they come to you with any other claim to anything else but being a Muslim, you have got nothing to do with them. I'm bearing witness in front of you. I am nothing but a Muslim. I'm not a Sunni, I'm not a Shia. What? I'm not a Barelvi, I'm not a Devbandi. I'm not a Salafi, I'm not a Sufi. I, Al Tafkadir Khatak, am a Muslim because my Prophet Muhammad Salallahu ibn Allah. Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam was a Muslim. His father Ibrahim Alayhi Salam was a Muslim. His father Adam Alayhi Salam was a Muslim. I'll mention the other ayah which is from Surah Al Imran. Ji. Ayah number 103. Okay. Hold fast to the rope of Allah all together. Do not split into sects or factions. This is a categorical order. What is the rope of Allah? Brother Mumin, what do you think? Go ahead. Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Yes. Because Quran has been practically shown to us how to live it yeah. is the sunnah of the prophet true, true. so Allah says if there is no evidence from Quran for what you are claiming and there is no evidence from the sunnah of the prophet what is the next thing you will split into sects and factions don't do that yes so just for our viewers understanding um, the, the sunnah of the prophet وسلم, and the word that sunni has no relation with that does it? Just for the viewers no. to understand. No, I am Sunni not a scholar. Sunni is completely no, different. No, no. Sunni is it came, uh, Ahl, Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat thing came in the time of Abbasid, which was about 250, 300 years after, 300 years after the passing away of the Prophet. Right. Because before that, the Shia came and because of the sheer conflict of the two uh, um, understanding which for which the main per reason was political differences mm -hmm. and historicity the history yeah. no but, so but my history yeah, history and uh, uh, and politics and uh, different understandings of the of the of the text led to these sort of a differences. What you are saying is, I am not saying that, because I'm not a, I'm not a great, I'm an ordinary, viewers, we need to understand my position. Mm. 
I am a very simple, straightforward, straight thinking Muslim who is trying to live according to Quran and Sunnah. If I don't find any evidence for anything in Quran and Sunnah, I try to re research it, talk to people and everything. And then if it fits into Quran and Sunnah, I follow it. If it doesn't, Rasulullah says that what is clear, the allowed things are clear and has been clearly mentioned by Allah. And the forbidden things, haram things are clear and been fit, clearly mentioned by Allah. And the boundaries have been clearly mentioned. The boundaries, hududullah, the boundaries of Allah have been clearly mentioned. Do not, so do not transgress those boundaries. And if there is something in between clear halal and clear haram, and it's a gray area, try to err on the, stay on the side of the halal things. Leave the, that, anything which puts you into doubt, leave it alone. Now, what you are trying to press me down to is that who is right and who is wrong. I don't want to get into that. Allah has actually said, the case rests with me. Yes. I am simply stating my position. I'm, mm -hmm. I've got nothing to do with uh, anything. I'm simply stating my position that I am a Muslim. Now, when you go beyond that, okay, and I follow Sharia. Mm. Sharia is... Sharia literally means the path, the way to the watering place. You know, that path which follow, which take the animals to the watering place in jungle, that is called Shara. Oh, wow. And the Sharia word has come to that, that you, when you travel that path, you reach to watering place and you live. Water wow. is life, isn't it? Okay. Now, any scholar like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, yeah. Imam Hanbal, Imam Jafar Sadiq, mm. any one of them, when they actually tried and worked uh, hard with all sincere efforts, with all their understanding and being trying to live as pure a life as possible and all these things, then they developed an understanding mm -hmm. of Sharia. The understanding of these great scholars become fiqh. Well, okay. Fiqh, the word fiqh means understanding. So this is the understanding of Imam Abu Hanifa, yeah. of the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah. This is the understanding of Imam Jafar Sadiq, okay, who was the great grandson of Rasulullah wasallam. This is the understanding of Imam Malik. Now, every Muslim may not be able to go that deep into it. So they adopt yeah. one of the fiqh understanding of one of the imam. So they are all, they are all actually telling the truth. Wow. Okay. And they actually, Imam Abu Hanifa was the, was the student of Imam Jafar Sadiq. Do you know this? No, I didn't. Imam Abu Hanifa was the student of Imam Jafar Sadiq, who is one of the greatest Imam of Shia. Wow. We need to understand these things. So this is not something to fight about and to hate each other. I follow the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa. Yeah. In all those things which are beyond my understanding. But I'm a Muslim. Yeah. So I think the important thing for the viewers to understand is that um, to be Muslim, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow the sunnah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's, that's, that's the crunch that's of it. That's the crux. That's the crux of it. Okay. And everything else that sort of flies around us, it's all sect. It's all, it's all um, made after. It's not ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. So it's These human are made. human beings, human made. which after 100 to 300 years yes, after, after the, the Prophet, Prophet they tried to look with all sincerity. We have become rigid in our these things. At the end of the day, Allah is going to ask me, who is your creator? 
you are my creator, Ya Rab. Allah is my creator. Who is your prophet? Muhammad Rasulullah is my Salam prophet. Allah. What is your deen? Islam. Who are you? I'm a Muslim. Hmm. He's not going to ask me whether you are a Sunni or a Shia. That's right. Yeah. Rather, hmm. if I have created friction, division in his deen, then he is going to hold me responsible for that. That because of you, my deen became divided. As a born Muslim, I've always thought about it, what parents in my community have said, you are Sunni, you are Shia, you are this, and we stuck to it. But obviously it's been clarified by the verses from the Quran that the most important thing is that we are Muslim. And it has no relation with whether you're Sunni or a Shia or that. On the Yom Al-Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address you as the Muslims, just like Dr. Katak has explained. So I think we should follow the sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we should do the um, rightful things as Muslims and should not create these sect and divisions and animosity among all Muslims. Inshallah, we will be uh, going into a ne another episode soon and I hope you stay with us and enjoy these marvelous and intellectual talks which are thought provoking for the viewers and the listeners. Stay with us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And may Allah be our guide inshallah. and guide our hearts and our thoughts the way He wants it to be and the way as near to truth as possibly in my capacity and your capacity inshallah. it can be. Inshallah.